about what God has for everyone, each and every one of us. God is amazing. Um, God is doing a mighty, mighty work. Um, hey, just to, real quick, let everyone know, um, we are broadcasting on um, Facebook right now live, but I, I do not know why um, Facebook shut off our um, live stream from our church platform, um, Boxcast. Um, but they have, but what you can do real quick, you can go and, um, you can always go to peakworship.com, select on live stream, or you can download the Boxcast app, the Boxcast app and, um, download the app and then you can get notified, um, by the app anytime that we go live. So that way you can always stay up on any event, anything that goes live through, um, Boxcast, um, the company that we use. So um, that way you can stay up to date. So download Boxcast app, um, look for Peak Worship, and then um, plug us in and then um, hit the notifications so you can be um, notified each and every time that we go live. So I'm excited. But welcome everyone to PDJ. Um, I'm so glad that, that we are um, able to come and share the gospel with you. And no matter what happens within the platforms, I thank you that God has always made a way and opened a way. We are also live on Twitter. So um, if you need to find me at Twitter, um, it's at SnyderDan. And um, you can um, join us live there as well. I, I titled the, the message, um, What's Inside? And, and I have my little friend here with me that that is going to, he, she's going to help me out um, with uh, the, the PDJ today. Amen. But I titled the message, What's Inside? And I want to read from John 14, 27. It says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Think about that. I want you just to, to listen to this scripture as I read it one more time and, and ponder on this. Reflect on what it's saying. It says, in John 14, 27, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Uh, think about that. Jesus, Yeshua himself is saying, I'm going to give you peace, but not like the world. I'm not going to give you peace that... that it comes from um, emotions or feelings. Uh, I, I'm giving you peace that, that is considered, it's, it's a state. It, it's it's uh, the word of God. It's, it's a peace that I can be in the midst of war, in the midst of, uh, of turmoil, facing the Goliaths, facing the, the fire in the furnace, facing the, the lion's den, facing uh, you know, a mortgage payment that you might be wanting to, paid, but you don't have the money, facing a, a problem at your job, uh, facing, you know, difficulties within the family. You, do you hear what I'm saying? In the midst of all that, whatever your circumstances, I have peace for you. I have peace for you. I have a state, a condition for you to be in. Think about that. That's powerful. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. And I'm glad that he says... I, I'm giving you my peace because there's something within Jesus, within Yeshua that he's trying to express. And I want us to, to, to understand this because this is where my little helper is going to come in. Because I, I have this little helper today that she's going to help me out. And, and I want you to understand because, see, it says in John 1.14, it says, you know, uh, uh, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Think about that. So we have Yeshua, the invisible God, in the flesh. We have the word of God wrapped in flesh. But Jesus said, Yeshua said in John 14, 27, peace I give you and, and my peace, I'm, I, you know, I, I'm going to make sure you got. And it's not like the peace of the world because the world really doesn't have a peace, right? But God Almighty has a peace that it's a state. It's not based on emotions or feelings. It's just knowing that, that you can trust and have the confidence in God. So, so we have our, our little helper here. And, and, and I, I was going to take out all the stuffing, but I, I'm not going to because 
I don't know if I'll be able to put it back and, and my son won't be happy if that's the case. But, but I want to use her as an example. And I don't know her name. I don't remember the name that, that my son gave her. But anyway, uh, it might be a he too. I don't know. But anyway, uh, if I was to pull out the stuffing, we would see the stuffing in one pile and then we would just see the skin in another pile. Do you, do, you, do, you, do you understand what I'm saying? So if I pulled out the stuffing, I would have this layer of skin, what it looks like on the outside, limp. It wouldn't be any good. You wouldn't play with it. It wouldn't have a form. It, 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 it wouldn't have anything. It would just kind of sit there in a pile of just cloth. Amen. Uh, it would, you know, it, it wouldn't be good for anything. You wouldn't be able to set it on my hands and it looked like a dog. It would look like a rag. Amen. Uh, you, you wouldn't be able to roof, roof, play with it. Yeah, I'm not losing my mind. You wouldn't, it wouldn't have paws. It wouldn't have back paws. It, it wouldn't have a belly. It wouldn't have a head. It wouldn't have a tail here. It wouldn't, it, you know, it just, it wouldn't be anything but a rag if I took all the stuffing out. But see, see, you, you take this and, and, and you make this and you take these stuffed animals and you stuff it full of stuffing and you start to form the paws, you start to form the head, you start to form the, the legs, the paws, the, the bellies, the back, the little tail right here. You know, it, it starts becoming, uh, uh, you know, in, in shape. It has a form. It, it, you start understanding what it's um, becoming. Think about it. Now, now that I have all the stuffing in it, it's just not a rag. It, it looks like a boxer dog. It looks like a little puppy boxer. And, and I can identify with it. I can see that. See, I, I want us to understand that Yeshua, as it says in John 1.14, that it was the word, word wrapped in flesh. So he came as man. He came in the flesh. But what was inside was the word of God. What kept him alive was the word of God. What, what gave him strength was the word of God. Even though he, he had to endure the cross, even though the crown of thorns was being pierced upon his head and, and, and it was going into his scalp, and even though the cat of nine tails was going across his back and, and ripping the flesh and blood was coming out, bone was showing it was the word of God that was keeping him strong. It was the word of God that was keeping him alive. It was the word of God that, that kept out the fear. It was the word of God that, that kept out the worry. It was what was inside. See, you have to understand that, that Yeshua, Jesus, had peace at all times. Because peace could never be separated from him because he was peace. And he gives us a peace that's not like the world. He gives him, himself to each and every one of us by the Spirit, by Holy Spirit. That's why he said, you know what? It's very important that I go because I'm going to send another. I'm going to send a comforter. And I want us to think about Yeshua, that he walked here on earth. He was able to do things that we weren't able to do. He was able to live a sinless life. He had dominion over the wiles of the devil. He was able to endure and, and he counted it all peace and counted it all joy. He was able to overcome. He was able to defeat death. He gave us the keys. He gave us victory. He was able to walk here on earth without fear, worry, doubt, stress because he knew his father was going to bless him. He knew his father was going to take care of him. He knew he could feed on the word of God and he never be hungry. Hungry. He knew he could thirst on the word of God and never be thirsty again because it was what was inside. See, I'm here to tell you that we have the same ability because he sent the comforter. The word of God is written on our hearts. Holy Spirit lives within us. We are able to have a peace that surpasses all understanding in all situations, just as it was inseparable with Yeshua, that Yeshua, it's like trying to take love away from Yeshua. You can't do it because it's the DNA of Yeshua, because he that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. God is peace. God is not fear. <laughs> can, I, can I get a witness? Can I get an amen? And see, we are... Christians that, that too many times we're allowing the peace of the world to come in and fill us and form us. But we don't look like the creation of God because we're this limp rag because we're not properly filled. 
because just as I said, I would remove the stuffing from this, this doggy. It wouldn't look like, look like a doggy. It would look like a rag. But if we're stuffed properly, we allow the Word of God to stuff us. We allow the Word of God to dwell in us. We're going to look like God's creation. We're going to be part of His army. That whenever we walk through a situation, when we're called by God to, to walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I'm going to have a peace within me because it's God's peace it's not the world's peace so it's going to withstand whatever I have to endure whatever I have to go through it's going to withstand and, and I'm going to be able to have the peace in the midst of the valley in the midst of the war in the midst of the furnace in the midst of your job situation in the midst of your sickness in the midst of whatever you are going through I can have a peace oh I can have a peace of God knowing that his hand knowing that I've given it to him, knowing that I'm living a righteous life, knowing that I've repented if I need to repent, knowing that I'm glorifying him and praising him, I can stand in the midst of a peace, knowing that my God, my God has it. He's taken care of it. He has authority over the enemy. He's already made a way of escape. Think about that. So I'll let me ask you what's inside. What's inside of you? What are you stuffed with? Is it little Caesars? You know what? You know what? Crust? Cheese stuff filled pizza? Or Pizza Hut, Papa John's? I got to name them all or else, you know. You see what I'm saying? There's something else besides food. There's something else besides the world. There's something else that can give us a peace that we can withstand and endure. A state of mind knowing that God Almighty is God. He is on the throne. He's King of Kings. He's Lord of Lords. That even though I'm in the midst of this illness, even though I'm in the midst of this turmoil, whatever it might be, that I know God is still God. He can heal me. He can touch me. He can deliver me. He can sustain me through this. I can, I, I can count this all joy. I can have peace in the midst of the storm because I know that I'm saved and set apart. I rest assured and put my confidence in God, King of kings and Lord of lords. See, it says in Luke 179, to give light to those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death, to guide your feet into the way of peace. Think about that. What are you, what's inside? I'm not talking about stuffing. Is it the word of God? Because the word of God is, is light. It illuminates our path. That way we won't stumble. We'll be able to discern from, right, discern from right and wrong. We'll be able to make the right choices. We'll be able to have strength to walk away from those individuals that we need to walk away from. We'll be able to walk away from that sin. We'll be able to walk away from that addiction. Yes, I might still have that craving, but it's not going to win. It's not going to draw me back. I, I can overcome it. I can endure. Long suffering. Hey, you know what? I, no one likes the long suffering, but I know I can have a peace in the midst of the long suffering. I know I can have meekness and, and temperance and, and joy because God's peace lives within me. His light, His word directs me, illuminates, removes darkness. Think about that. How dark are we because of what's inside? What are we stuffing ourselves full of? That makes us look like the world or makes us fall. Where are we going to, to put ourselves in temptation that, that we know we can't handle? What are we looking at? What are we doing? Are we coming and dropping to our knees and our feet and, our, and just you know, coming to him and broken and humbling ourselves and saying, Lord, you know what? I can't do it. You know what that's saying? That's saying, you know what? I'm removing everything inside of me because I can't do it, but I know you can Fill me. Fill me. Give me strength. Give me a peace to be able to endure, to be able to long suffer through whatever I might have to go through. Think about that. It says in John 20, verse 19, Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, then the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled. For the fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be with you. See, even the disciples had fear. This is what this outer layer, this flesh, this little doggy represents our flesh. We can't get rid of the flesh. We're going to walk in this flesh, and this flesh has desires, and this flesh wants to worry, this flesh wants to doubt, this flesh wants to lust, this flesh wants to covet. 
right? But let me tell you, what I stuff myself full of will predict whether the flesh reigns and rules my life or whether who lives inside of me reigns and rules in my life. That's why it's important to meditate on the Word day and night. That's why it's important to hear the Word, to read the Word, to study the Word, to pray, to come to God and seek God. And you know what? Just to be broken before Him saying, Lord, I don't have this, but I know you do. I need you to fill me. I need strength. I feel fear coming. I feel lust coming. I feel, Father God, Lord, a worry and stress and doubt coming. But Father God, Lord, you did not give me a spirit of fear. For Lord, you... You are my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? You are the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid of? Give me your peace. See, it matters what's inside. See, I love the fact that he came right through the door. I, you know, Jesus came and stood in the midst. I don't think he opened the door. I'll just let you know. I think he just came right through the walls, the doors, and everything, and, and appeared to them and said, you know what? Peace be with you. What are you guys doing? You guys are all shut up in here in your fear. I, I didn't give you a spirit of fear. I gave you peace. I gave you strength. I gave you light. I gave you my word. I said I'd be with you. I'd never leave you nor forsake you. Think about that. What, what's inside of us? What are we stuffing ourselves with? Is it just the world? Is it just food? Or, or is there spiritual food? Because if I thirst in, in, of Jesus, Yeshua, if I drink of him, the living water, I'll never thirst again. If I eat of him, I'll never be hungry again. Yeah, the flesh needs food. So I'm talking spiritually because we, we get this all messed up. We don't understand that we could, we could feed the, the, the enemy spiritually within our lives. Amen? We can allow the enemy to come in and we feed that, 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 that devil. Amen? We feed that, the wrong motives. We feed the fear. Fear is just a demonic spirit. Fear uh, and worry is just, it's not of God. And, but too many times, that's what we're feeding. Because we're not feeding of the Word of God. We're not stuffing ourselves properly. What's inside? Because see, without God, I'm just like this doggy would be. I would just be a rag. Think about it. How many of these dogs would be sold? If it didn't have stuffing, if it just looked like a rag, a pile of rags, none of them would be, right? No one would buy a stuffed animal that wasn't stuffed, right? Because you'd be no good. Think about that. See, the devil would want us to be stuffed with the world, to know the world, act like the world, be like the world. But to please God, to, to allow him to stuff us, to allow him to live in us, and allow him to to be peace in the word, we, we, we are able to overcome. Just think, what are we able to overcome? The wiles of the devil. What are we able to do? We're able to live here on this earth and it, for this short little season as we're a vapor that, that you know what, I, I'm going to make the best of it. I'm going to have joy and peace. I'm choosing to, to you know what, count everything, you know, as joy, whatever tribulation, whatever suffering, what I'm going to, I'm choosing the right attitude. I'm choosing to have peace. I'm choosing to, to rely and count on my salvation that I am saved and set apart. I'm just here for a vapor. So if I need to be in the furnace, so be it. If I'm at the peak, I'm, so be it. If I'm in the valley, so be it. If I'm in the mansion, so be it. I just want to please you, Lord. It says in Philippians 4, 7, And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Just think about that. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. Understanding that you can't even understand. Do you understand? <laughs> think about it. Our understanding is very limited. But God has a peace that surpasses our understanding. I should be worried right now, but I have no idea why I'm not. But because of the word of God is the only reason why. Right? Peter should have never walked on water, but he did. It goes past my understanding. But God's given me a peace that he did walk on, the, uh, walk on wa water because it's not my understanding that, that, that I'm focused on. It, it's the promises and it's the word of God. It's the power of God that he's able to do all things and anything. Think about that. Philippians 4, 7. Let me just read it again. And the peace of God, which suppresses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. You know what it's saying? That the peace will guard your heart. That when Satan wants to shoot those fiery darts at you, that the fiery darts will hit the peace of God. When he wants to shoot worry, he wants to shoot fear, he wants to shoot doubt, it should hit the peace of God. 
The problem is, is too many times we don't have the peace of God. We have the peace of the world. So that dart penetrates and we, we start you know, pondering on that worry and that strife and that fear. That's when we need to come before God and say, look, Lord, <laughs> before you I've sinned and Lord, help me, strengthen me. I am in the midst of fear. I'm in the midst of worry. I'm in the midst of doubt. Hey, I, 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 your pastor does it. I, I, I have to do it. I allow those darts to come in sometimes because I don't have the peace of God. That's why I have to, whenever I notice it and I feel it, that I have to get right on my knees and, and you know, I have to start praying and I have to get the peace of God to get rid of that fire from that, that, that enemy and that dart and remove that and, and get that peace that guards me and protects me or else, you know what, I'm going to live a life of, of yo like a yo-yo. Fear and doubt and worry is going to control me and that's not what's going to control me. The peace of God is going to protect my heart that that will not penetrate. That's what we need, says in Colossians 3.15. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts to which also you were called in one body and be thankful. And then my last scripture that we're going to close with, it says in 1 John 4, 4. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. So let me ask you, who's in you? Who's the one that, that can anoint you, show you favor, uh, illuminate through you, use you in a mighty way like you've never can, you know, understand? Who, who, who? God, Holy Spirit coming in within you. And whenever we allow Holy Spirit, the peace of God to come in, we start illuminating and radiating like Jesus. We start looking more like him. We start choosing more like him. We, we start walking out, you know, uh, uh, things within our life like we've never walked out before. That used to conquer me, but, but now I, I've conquered it because of he that lives in me is greater than the world. I'm able to sleep at night and I shouldn't be sleeping at night. You know what? What happened at work should have taken me down because it took me down last year and the year before, but it doesn't anymore. Those friends, that, that family members that, that keeps, you know what, uh, bad-mouthing me and doesn't want nothing to do with me. It used to hurt, but you know what? I, I, man, you know what? There's something else that gives me peace and it's God because I've stuffed myself. What's inside of me is greater than the world and it's Jesus Christ. It's Holy Spirit that lives within me. That is, that's the word of God. It's the light of Christ because we are light bearers. So everywhere I go, there's illumination that's going out and, and destroying the darkness, destroying the negativity within the world. Amen? It changes the atmosphere. That's what we should be, is atmosphere changers, right? It should change your attitude that I am able to do all things through Christ that strengthens me. That means I'm able to, to be, you know, uh, uh, you know confident. I'm able to, to be content. I'm able to, to walk wherever God wants me to walk and know that he said he would never leave me nor forsake me. So he's right here with me. That, you know, I, I, I have the ability to pray whenever the world says not to pray. They're going to throw me into the lion's den. Then I'm still going to pray. You know what? It's against the law to serve God. Well, I'm going to serve God anyway. Uh, you know what? That's why China probably has more Christians than the, what we do. Because when people start being persecuted and thrown down, you know what? That's whenever, oh, God gives those that are weak the strength to be able to to overcome and i'm telling you they're overcoming in their underground churches their secret churches god's power and authority is going through china and i'm here to tell you we're about to see god's glory in the midst of china think about that what's inside what's inside i hope it's the word i hope it's god's peace because that's the only thing that's going to get us through things it's his word. It's his light. Do we want to know how to walk? Then we need his word. We need his light to illuminate our way, our path, that we don't stumble, that we're able to choose righteously, that we're able to make the right decisions, that, that you know, I, I can be a lender and not a borrower. You know, I don't really need the, the half a million dollar sports car. I, I'm okay with the $5,000 used car right now because, you know, there's other things that, that I need. I, I want to get a home before I get that, that Lamborghini. I want to get the, the business started before I do anything else. I want to get my education, you know, priorities, right? But we can only make those correct decisions by the word of God, by the peace that lives in us. That way, that peace of God that should live within us, that way, it will not allow us to make any emotional decisions. That means decisions based on emotions, feelings, 
How many times you've had buyer's remorse, you go out and buy something, it's like, oh, geez. I, yeah, because you didn't have that peace. You didn't have that peace, that contentment, that you, you were just okay with that 24-inch screen TV instead of that 85-inch. Amen? You were okay with the antenna in the attic instead of the $250, you know, cable bill. I'm glad. I hope people can have the cable bill one day. That, that's fine. But what I'm saying is, you know what? When we have the peace of God, no matter what or where we're at, we're going to be okay. And we have that peace that surpasses all understanding because it's God's peace. If I have to go to the cross like Yeshua did, not because I'm Savior, just because, you know what, I'm standing for His word. Because it says that, you know what, when I come to know Him, that the world's going to hate me. But it's hated Him first. So there's things of the world that's going to come against believers. But that's okay. I have a peace. I have a peace. I'm saved and set apart. Yeshua is my Lord and Savior. If it comes to that, then that means being absent from the body just means presence, present with Him. But that means I'm going to be an overcomer in the midst of all of it. That means I'm more than a conqueror. And I have a peace from God that surpasses all understanding. Father, we just thank you, Father God, for your peace. I thank you for your word. I thank you for this PDJ. Father, I just ask you, Father God, Lord, to, that, it, that it penetrates. It penetrates within the, the deepest parts of our spirit. Father God, Lord, that it just touches us. It changes us, Father God. Lord, that, that we, can, we can realize that no matter where we're at in our life, no matter what we're going through, that we can have a peace, a peace from you because you've given us your peace that surpasses all understanding that I can stand, that I know I'm going to make it, that I know I'm saved, I know I'm set apart, I know you can use me, I know that you can, you can bless me, I know that you want the best for me. I have this peace, and I pray that peace, Father God, Lord, upon each and every one of us, Father God. Lord, let this change our lives, let this change how we see you, and change how we walk in you and towards you. We love you, we thank you, we give you the glory and honor in Yeshua's mighty name. And everyone says, amen, amen. Hey, man, God is amazing, isn't it? I could just keep going, it's just so good. God is amazing. I thank you for joining me for PDJ today. Uh, make sure you join us for Bible study. Bible study tomorrow, it's the third Wednesday of the month. So Bible study tomorrow night at seven o'clock. So make sure you join us. Um, and then we have the series coming um, up this Sunday. Here, um, here I am. Um, coming up that's going to go throughout the summer most of the summer so i want you to be a part of that and then make sure you submit your prayer request prayer request uh, make sure you submit them because 7 30 in the morning thursday we're going to be praying amen and then do not forget ladies prayer ladies prayer thursday night at 6 30 every thursday love you guys you guys are awesome we're praying for you we love you send the testimony send the prayer request send whatever you have amen and uh, let's just do life together we love you guys remember Remember, we're about building people, serving God. <laughs> we're a movement, not an establishment. Amen. Love you all. Bye-bye.